the reason why I write these books is to be independent and free. The organisations and agencies put in the locks and try and um, treat it like everybody else that's disabled. <coughs> I need to make free of that and I need to go away from that and get my own care and my own daughter to be free from the, I don't want to become more disabled. I don't want to, I want to live out there. Yeah, enjoy my last few years on this planet. Hi, please like and subscribe and help me get my life back. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Uh, to all the people that like to subscribe, thank you very much. It's more to appreciate all the help that you gave me. Chapter 10, Homeward Bound. The remaining days of the expedition were filled with a sense of soberness as the astronauts prepared to return. Their bond had grown even more robust throughout the experiment and formed a sense of community. Chris was even glad to be a part of this community. He needed as many people as he could. He lacked a proper support system for a long time, but now it was different. These people shared the same passions as him and could understand him on a certain level. He had made countless new friends and saw himself making even more. The astronauts shared more about themselves as they rounded up with the research, tidying up and compiling data. Some spoke of stories from their childhood and some said of their journey to being astronauts. Like Chris, many of them had dreams, and they had to go through hurdles to achieve those dreams. Every one of them in that spacecraft had different paths, but they were connected by one thing, and that was the fact that they were all human beings trying to make meaning of their lives and enjoy it to the fullest. The day to return to the Earth quickly came. Chris was torn between his excitement to meet his friends and family and leaving the beauty of space behind. Like all good things, he had to accept that it ended. The descent back to the Earth was different from when they had ascended. It was quick and noisy. The spacecraft groaned and roared, shaking as it plummeted to the Earth with the aid of gravity. In a few seconds, it was over, and the hatch was opened. One by one, the astronauts stepped out of the spacecraft. As soon as Chris came outside, he breathed the Earth's fresh air, appreciating it more than ever now. He still loved the Earth and the people he had connected with over the years. Life would be meaningless without them around. A large crowd of people were at the base to welcome them. He searched with his eyes for Sarah and his family. Then he found them. As soon as he locked eyes with Sarah, his heart swelled with joy and his lips pulled into a fully blown smile. Chris, she called, then ran all the way to meet him. She threw herself at him, pulling him into a crushing hug. Oh, Chris, Chris responded, wrapping his arms around her. He had missed her so much. A few days away from her seemed like a thousand years and his heart longed for her, but she was here again, wrapped in his arms. When they pulled apart, he noticed the people standing behind them. Some of them he recognized and some he didn't, but they all had warm smiles and were looking at him. Congratulations, Chris, a friend said. He was a fellow intern at Dr. Helen's research lab. Congratulations, Chris. The rest of the crown began to echo, leaving him feeling like a star. The crew went through rigorous physical checkups and briefings in the days following their return. They informed the center of their findings and every process they had passed through in space. Everyone was very sure their research would contribute significantly to space travel. On the other hand, Chris became the media focus of the month. He received several invitations to hold an interview and had to attend many seminars and conferences, especially those geared toward the disabled community. His life was taking a fast turn, and he was eager to share his experience and life story with those who would listen. 
One of the invitations came from his alma mater, his university, where he had studied astrophysics. Entering into that environment again was like walking back in time. A rush of memories attacked his mind and nostalgia washed over him. This was where everything had started. After his accident, he wouldn't know what would have become of him if he hadn't applied to study astrophysics. Maybe he would have turned to someone lying in bed all day, waiting to be fed. At the thought, he shuddered. In the auditorium, as he gave his speech in front of hundreds of students like him, he felt the responsibility on his shoulders. He now had a mission to stoke the fire in the hearts of many. He needed to make them believe in their dreams, to tell the world that nothing was impossible. The impact of his mission continued to spread far and wide, even beyond inspiring future astronauts. It sparked discussions on diversity in STEM and space exploration beyond the shores of their state and other countries. Chris became a leading voice in these discussions, using his experiences to advocate for more inclusion and opportunities. Amidst all the universities and seminars he was invited to, the one that struck him the most was a local school. They had also asked him to speak about his mission. He accepted the invitation eagerly, honoring the date they had set. Once he arrived, he was given a better reception than he had ever received. The principal had come out to welcome him with a long line of students, forming two rows on the passageway. They gave him a clapping ovation as he wheeled himself to their classroom. Looking at the children, he could see their curiosity and their passion. He could see his younger self, full of faith and hope for the future. They were the leaders of tomorrow, seedlings who would sprout one day and grow into mighty trees. Their minds had to be shaped for the future to make the world a better place. Everyone, let's welcome Mr. Chris, their teacher said. Good morning, Mr. Chris, they all chorused. Chris smiled, edging forward on his chair. It was time to plant seeds of hope in the future generation. Good morning, everyone. I am going to tell you a great story. 